Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. Mr. Curry, it's Jones the Builder. I brought the bill. I know you're in there, Mr. Curry. I can hear you shuffling about. Excuse me. Do you know if Mr. Curry's home? I brought the bill for mending his broken window. Then I expect Mr. Curry's hiding. He does that when he hears the word bill. Well, we'll see about that. I'll have some friends pay him a call. They'll soon winkle him out. <laughs> He's gone. With any luck, he won't be back. He said he was sending some friends over to winkle you out, Mr. Curry. <gasps> winkle me out? Look here, Bear. I need help. Stay here, and if anyone strange calls, say I'm away. But I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. After all, who broke the window in the first place? You did, Mr. Curry, when you slammed the front door the other day. And why did I slam the door? Because you got marmalade on my knocker. So make sure you don't let anyone in while I'm gone. Have some tomatoes. <laughs> Let's pull in there and hide. Uh-oh. That must be the Builder's friends. It worked. We gave them the slip. But they'll be looking for us now. Uh, hello. Um, I'm Paddington, Mr. Curry's neighbour. Um, he isn't here right now, and... Uh... The house is empty. My friend, it's perfect. <laughs> Perfectly bad luck, you mean? <laughs> We're Mr. Curry's distant cousins. How nice. Do come in. This is the sitting room. Here, you sit down and make yourselves comfortable. I'll go make some tea. <sighs> Did you say comfortable? Mustn't look a gift horse in the mouth. Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let me help you. No! Oh, oh, I've never seen such junk. If you remember, Mr. Curry keeps all his best furniture locked away in the cellar, along with his valuables. Uh, of course. Yeah, we'd forgotten. I'll go make the tea now. <laughs> if we could get rid of that bear, we could clean out this house in a jiffy. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we were wondering if you'd run down to the shops for us. Uh, we'd go ourselves, but we don't want to miss Cousin Murray. Murray? Don't you mean Curry? Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> Silly me. If you'll take this, I'll find some paper and make a list. <laughs> oh, that's hot! <laughs> Here, let me help you. <laughs> then perhaps I'll go down to the shops now. What did you want? Bandages! Painkillers. These two men escaped from jail just a few hours ago. The commissioner's offering a big reward for their arrest. Call us if you see them. Someone's been having a bad day, haven't they? Oh, 
after we sell all this stuff, we should have enough cash to retire. Just as long as we put enough miles between us and that bear. Oh no! They must have got tired of waiting. Wait! Hold up. I forgot to close the back doors. It's all right. <gasps> I'll do it. Uh, we thought we might take a little trip around London while we wait. Really? I love trips. What a good thing I got back in time. Hmm. What a coincidence. Mr Curry has a candlestick just like this. Whoops! Uh, oh. Oh. Look out! Oh. oh dear. I think I'm in trouble again. <laughs> we want to go back to jail! It's those escaped prisoners. Hurry! Arrest us! We won't try to escape! Just get us away from that bear! Hello. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm willing to bet the bear got rid of that builder and his friends. <gasps> What's happened to my chair? Bear! That bear must have let them in. They've destroyed the place. <gasps> my valuables! I've been winkled! They've taken everything! Wait till I get my hands on that bear! There you are! I've been robbed of all my valuables! And it's all your fault! Here, wait a minute, sir. If it wasn't for this young bear, we wouldn't have nabbed two escaped prisoners and recovered your stolen goods. Indeed, you should be thanking him. I have no hesitation in handing over the reward to you, Mr. Paddington Brown. We did it, Bear. We caught those criminals. But, Mr. Curry, a brilliant idea. And well, seeing you are both responsible for the capture, we'll give you half each. Thank you very much. Ah, Mr. Jones, just the man I was looking for. <laughs> Here. This should cover the repair bill. Everything's settled. Not quite, Mr. Curry. You still have to take your valuables inside. How am I going to do that? Maybe Mr. Jones's friends can help you. Fine. But this is all your fault, Bear. And I won't forget it. One of the best things about travelling with Mr. Gruber collecting stories for his book The World and Its Wonders is staying in hotels. And one of the best things about hotels is being able to watch television in bed. This pod. I've never seen anything like it before. It's out of this world. That's because it was left by the mothership of an alien race from Alpha Centauri. It was horrible! Horrible! It is horrible! Horrible! Alien flying sources! They're coming to get us! To take us away in their paws! <laughs> and then the aliens carried the poor people away in a space pod! It's no wonder you had nightmares, Mr. Brown. But don't forget, it was only a movie. Don't you believe in aliens, Mr. Gruber? It would make a very good chapter for your book if we saw a real one. Many people claim to have experienced close encounters with aliens, but such stories are usually more fancy than fact. What? <gasps> Mr. Gruber, over there, a flying saucer. What? Uh... Over there. <gasps> it's gone. It must have dematerialized, like they did in the movie. Perhaps you shouldn't watch any more late night movies until we reach our next destination, Mr. Brown. If there's one flying saucer about, there are probably others. Bigger ones, full of... 
aliens. I was right after all. I must tell Mr. Gruber. Mr. Gruber! Mr. Gruber! Mr. Brown, what is it? You look like you've seen a ghost. Not a ghost, Mr. Gruber. Something even worse. Real aliens! Have you been watching television again? I saw them with my own eyes. Come on, we must be on the lookout for more. I think the receptionist is getting curious, Mr. Brown. How long do you plan to wait here? As long as it takes, Mr. Gruber. I brought extra film and we should be careful to stay out of sight. Oh, they're here. You can't deny what you see with your own eyes. I'm afraid I can't see anything without my glasses, Mr. Brown. Where are they? They're gone. Again. Come on, Mr. Brown. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you think you saw. But I think you should understand once and for all that there is no such thing as aliens. Scientific data repudiates any evidence of extraterrestrial life. How do you do? Huh? They've abducted Mr. Gruber! Can I help you, sir? I want to report an alien abduction. Very droll, sir. Would there be anything else? Anything else? I should have thought being abducted by aliens was quite enough. Hmm. Mrs. Bird is right. If you want something done, do it yourself. Hold on, Mr. Gruber, wherever you are. Astounding. Mr. Brown was seeing aliens. What floor? You don't sound like aliens. We're not. We're here for the science fiction convention at the conference center. It's so far out that you fell for our costumes. Long life and prosperity. It's no wonder Mr. Brown is confused. I think I'd better find him before he jumps to any more wrong conclusions. Okay. An alien pod! this space pod with three giveaways and get it back to the convention as fast as possible. The aliens must be planning to transport Mr. Gruber back to Alpha Centauri in that space pod. I don't have much time. Room service. We didn't order room service. Don't worry, Mr. Gruber. I'll soon have you out of there. It's all right, Mr. Gruber. I won't let the aliens scramble your brains. Stop that there! He's stealing our giveaways! Oh! Mr. Brown, hold on! Hang on, Mr. Gruber. We're under alien attack. Ah! Aliens! Everywhere! Hey, you! Get back that space pod! I'm not letting you take, Mr. Gruber. Set phasers on stun. No power. And these aliens want to rule the universe. Get him! They're getting ready to leave, but I'll save you, Mr. Gruber. Great costume, man. What an awesome start to the science fiction convention. Convention? There you are, Mr. Brown. Now do you understand? Contact has been established with the alien forces, Mr. Gruber. Wish Mrs. Bird long life and prosperity, and tell her not to wait up. I'll be back home as soon as they let me down. 
Now that's 51, 52, 53 feet, 54, 55, 56, 62, 63, 60. What are you up to, Bear? I was just doing some measuring, Mr. Curry. I found this in a corner of the attic. It's a map of the Browns and your garden. A survey map, eh? Yes. I measured the Browns' garden as 64 feet across, but the map says it should only be 60 feet. I see. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Curry. This survey map confirms my Long Hill suspicion that the dividing fence is in the wrong place. It's been put four feet inside my property, for which I shall now be charging £200 a month rent. But hold on. It's always been like that, ever since your grandfather built it. Ah, yes, Grandpa Curry, a kinder and more generous man you couldn't hope to meet. £200 a month? for a bit of old garden. Ah, there's this too. A prorated compound interest bill for the years of unlawful appropriation of property totaling £92,465 and 12 pence. I could only have the 12 pence, Mr. Brown. Mr. Curry, why don't you go home, have a... That's your attitude, is it? Well, we'll see about that. Ha! Uh-oh. Right. That's four feet. Since Mr. Brown won't pay me rent, I shall be occupying my rightful territory. Um, Mr. Brown, Mr. Curry's doing something in your garden. <sighs> he's playing a silly little game, Paddington. Just ignore him. I'll try, but he's rather hard to ignore. Especially when he's about to cut down your prize rose bushes. <laughs> What? Ah, ah, ah. Private property. You can't cut my roses. And why not? They're on my side. Mm. <laughs> Ow! Those are my garden shears. Where did you get them? From the tool shed, of course, which is also on my side. Ooh, and I got the lawn furniture from the garage. Now, since only half of it is on my property, I'll allow you to park the car here, but I'll need a set of keys. That does it, Curry. I'm getting my solicitor. By all means, waste your money on solicitors. Thanks to that bear, I've got all the proof I need. Ow! I wish I'd never found that map. Help me out! I think it's time I saw Mr. Gruber. He might know what to do. I don't understand. Why would Mr. Curry's grandfather build the fence four feet onto his own property? Mr. Curry did say his grandfather was a generous man. <coughs> Excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing, but I delivered milk to Windsor Gardens when I was a lad. Clumsy boy! Look, you've made a terrible mess. You either clean this up, or I'll expect free milk and cream for a year. <laughs> oh, but old man Curry was neither kind nor generous. And if he had anything to do with building a fence, I suggest you go to the town hall and look at the official survey. Hmm. Ah, oh, Windsor Gardens. I used to play there when I was a girl. A lovely street. Except there was one house with a most disagreeable man. A Mr. Curry, I believe. Some things never change. Ah, that's it. May I have a copy of this, please? Why, of course, dear. He's gone too far this time. Barbed wire, cutting my roses, stealing my tools. He even wants my car keys. Ow! Oh, what the... Uh, hmm. Oh, I'm 
I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. Mr. Curry, I'm Mr. Jones, Mr. Brown's solicitor. I'll have to ask you to suspend work. No, no, he's not Mr. Curry. He's Paddington, and he's... Paddington? What are you doing? Well, I decided the only way to stop all the fighting was for me to move the fence once and for all. Excellent survey, Mr. Paddington. Oh, thank you. That's exactly where the fence should be. But that's on Mr. Curry's side. Yes, I thought that odd too, but I triple-checked all my measurements. And where did this map come from? I got it from the town hall. You mean... All these years, Mr. Curry has actually had four feet of our garden? His grandfather must have changed the map you found in the attic to take some of our land. Oh, this calls for a little celebration. <laughs> Stop that incessant racket! I can't hear myself think. Mr. Curry, you're just in time for cake. You've moved my barbed wire. Just what are you up to? Get off my property! Shoo! Shoo! Your property? I'm afraid that according to the official survey map, this is our property. Well, what about this map? Yes, what about this map? It doesn't seem to match the official town map. Perhaps your grandfather made some modifications. Possible. A kinder, more generous... More generous man, yes, yes. Especially to himself. You... Look, Mr. Curry, why don't we just leave the fence where it is and forget this mat nonsense ever happened? You mean, though this is your property, you won't be charging me rent? It's more important to be good neighbours than it is to fight. <laughs>